Welcome to TOA Talks, the podcast from the town of Ajax. I'm your host, Devin Jarvis, the Supervisor of Communications and Engagement. And on today's episode, we're talking with Ajax's Director of Finance and Treasurer, Diane. Episode highlights include, having lived in Ajax for over 20 years, Diane sits down with us to talk about how she started in finance and her learning path, as well as the challenges and opportunities she has had working in the finance department in the town. Diane also provides some important points to remember about the budget process, where to learn about the budget, and property taxes. TOA Talks. Hello, Ajax. Thank you for tuning in to TOA Talks. Today, I'm speaking with Diane, our Director of Finance. Welcome, Diane. Hi, Devin. So before uh, we get started here, we're just going to kick things off with a quick little icebreaker. Do you mind if you take a question out of the bowl? Okay. All right. One is, what is one of the most memorable adventures experiences you've had traveling? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, uh, I am originally from Niagara-on-the-Lake and do a lot of traveling back and forth there. Nice. So I uh, would <laughs> not, not, not uh, say that it's uh, memorable traveling there, but um, des- definitely the destination. Destination um, of choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, traveling along, along the 401 is... Uh, is memorable at times as well. Always an adventure. You <laughs> never know what you're going to run into on the 401. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so now we'll kind of get right into it. Um, can you first just tell us a little bit about yourself or our listeners? Sure. So I've lived in Ajax for about 25 years. Met my husband at university and he is uh, an Ajax resident, has oh. grown up here since uh, I think he was five years old. Oh, wow. Um, and then we established and and raised our family here. So big part of the community for a long time with three kids that have been very active and on a lot of sports and soccer and hockey. So spent a lot of time at our recreation (laughs) facilities and um, constantly looking, you know, and dealing with with the staff. Had great experience. So when I had the opportunity to work in Ajax, I was really excited to be working in the community that I live in. And also being able to provide um, the opportunity for my kids to take them to their sporting events. Um, Prior to that, I was working downtown Toronto, so having to commute and go train. So it really helped with the work-life balance and being able to be there for my kids. So um, been a great opportunity here. Um, I've been with the town on and off now for about 15 years. So in the finance department the entire time. So yeah, I think it's a very rewarding job. And I love the people that I work with, not only in my department, but across the corporation. Yeah, somebody who, myself, uh, being born and raised in Ajax, it's incredibly rewarding to be able to give back to the community that, um, you know, I know and love so much. Um, Unfortunately, I don't live in Ajax anymore, but I spent a lot of time in our recreation facilities growing up, going to different sporting events, um, you know, going to our library system. So it's incredibly rewarding. And I do have to say, when I started working at the town, my commute was five minutes, which was absolutely fabulous. (laughs) I do miss that a little bit. So thank you for sharing that. And we'll get into a little bit more of our um, department-specific questions now. So your department, Diane, is made up of various sections, including budget and financing services, property taxes, purchasing, as well as some administrative tasks. Can you explain a little bit more about what your average day today looks like as a director of finance? Well, I can try. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's any average day. Every day uh, presents its own challenges and opportunities. Um, so definitely throughout the year, there are um, themes, I would say. Uh, so our property tax department is more like busier four times a year when, right. the, when the installment dates are due. Uh, So we definitely see call volume going up. We see more individuals coming to the tax counter. Um, So that ties into our our installment dates. Budgets and accounting staff, obviously, um, through the budget season. Budget seasons are long, (laughs) um, but we ramp up this time of year. So fall and into winter. And then in the new year, of course, we're, we're calendar, fiscal calendar year. So we have our year end. And our auditors come in. So definitely themes there as well where, you know, the intensity kind of um, peaks at those times. Um, Our procurement area, their busy time is right after the budget is approved. Mm -hmm. So they're setting their calendar to say, okay, when will I have to go out to bid these projects? And what are the projects that have been approved in a certain year? And getting ready for that construction season. So some of those bigger projects that happen throughout the summer, there's there's a window for the construction season. And so they're preparing as soon as the budget is approved 
to move forward and, and get everything in the queue. All right. I didn't even think about um, how it would kind of be like seasonal that way, mm-hmm. depending on which section you're working in within your department. And um, I'll kind of go into that because you were touching on each of the different sections. And um, even in your intro there, it's talking about being an Ajax resident. What do you love the most about working for Ajax? And what is your favorite part of your job slash your department? Uh, I think the people. Um, the, the people for sure. I'm, I'm so lucky to have such dedicated and um, great people that I work with, the community itself. So it's not even just in my department, but across a corporation and being able to work. So finance is actually a, a service department to the entire organization. Right. So we have budget contacts, we have our accounting staff, even our procurement section, they deal with individuals in each and every department. So we get to meet a lot of people, not just within our specific area. Um, and being able to work with people in different departments is is rewarding because you get to you get to know people and, and you get to learn about what they do. Um, so it's not just finance. Um, in my prior role as a senior financial analyst, I was a budget contact for planning and development. Well, oh, cool. I understood then I learned about the roads and right. the different layers of roads, what it takes to construct them, um, the different aspects of a building. Uh, so I found it very interesting. And and I was even uh, named as an honorary engineer some, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> because I asked those good questions. I'm like, oh, I did thought about this and what happens here? Um, so I found that that was very rewarding and being able to work with people. Um, as I've evolved in my, in my role, um, it's I find it very rewarding now to mentor and share the knowledge that I've learned. Um, and especially with the younger people coming in, the new uh, new employees, it's really rewarding to be able to share with them the knowledge that I've learned over those years and um, see them grow as well. When you were first starting out in your career, did you ever think that you were eventually going to be a treasurer slash director of finance? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, when I started my career, I didn't even know what a budget was. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of uh, ironic now that, uh, you know, that's the focus yeah. uh, of my job for the most part. Um, you know, it's, it's a running joke. When do you start budgets? Well, when don't I start budgets? Right. When am I not in a budget? Uh, do you mind if I ask what you thought you were going to end up doing in your career? Like, did you think it was always going to be finance? Did you go to school for this? Or um, did you think it was going to be something completely different? Uh, well, when I was in high school, um, I actually wanted to become a physiotherapist. Okay, very different. So um, I was into athletics as well and really loved the human anatomy and the body. And um, then I think I changed my path when I was applying to university mm-hmm. and realized how hard it was to get into physiotherapy right. within Ontario and Canada. So I kind of had to sit back and say, oh, what do I really like to do? Like, what else could I do? And I said, well, I like numbers and I like money. So I decided to go into (laughs) business. Finance. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So that's kind of how my path changed. And and honestly, I just figured that finance was such a broad area that there were a lot of opportunities there. So I didn't know at that time whether it would be marketing or accounting or what it was going to be. But... um, you know the path is not always straight. It's it's a winding, a winding path, and it, it took me to where I am today. Well, it's definitely funny how things kind of work out sometimes, and where we end up um, and where we begin. So a little bit opposite of that question there, being in finance, um, what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that residents of Ajax might have about your department's work? I'm not sure if there's any misconceptions, but perhaps they don't know the breadth of things that we look after. Right. Um, because really the public facing part of our department is property taxes. Right. Um, so the other aspects, the budgets and the accounting and the procurement, and actually we look after risk mitigation as well. Some of the insurance aspect of things. Um, a lot of people aren't really aware of what's all involved with that right. and how we do work closely with with the entire corporation. Mm-hmm. So perhaps, you know, when when individuals or residents think about um, finance, maybe they only think about the property tax aspect. Right. Which I probably would have before I started working at the town. So that's a great point. And kind of speaking about property taxes, um, I know it um, probably isn't everybody's favorite topic out there. Um, 
But can you ask a burning question that we get a lot? Um, even myself working in communications, we get this question quite a bit on social media, I find. Um, why do property taxes raise every year and will they ever be decreased? Well, the, the decreased <laughs> question, I it's really hard to say. Yeah. Um, likely, I don't think I've ever seen a decrease, probably only if there are services or things that are uploaded to the government, like the mm-hmm. provincial government, right, that take it off of our um, responsibility. But um, property taxes, you know, we are no different than somebody running their household. We have expenses. We have to pay utilities. We're running huge facilities. We're running, uh, you know, ice rinks and pools mm-hmm. that take a lot of hydro, water. And so, you know, it, it's really difficult. You know, every, everything else is going up inflation. So mm-hmm. we're not immune to that. You know, we we look at contracts and various things. So as the town continues to grow, and it has grown a lot in the last 25 years that I've lived here, uh, we've built more infrastructure. So we've built more roads, built more parks, right. we've built new facilities. All of these things now take money to maintain. So yep. not only you're building them, but you're maintaining them. So you have more hydro costs, you have more cleanup costs, you know, um, you have more roads to plow. Maybe that one still plow is not enough. Now you have to, you know, get two or three more plows. So the maintenance of the equipment. Um, so as we continue to grow, and even if, you know, Ajax geographically is almost built out. So we're looking at intensification now, but right. it's going to require changes to the things that we've had because we're going to have more people in smaller areas. And so was that park that was built in the middle of town, was that sufficient for a growing is community? It, right. So maybe that needs to be adjusted. And so these are all the things that when we start to build our budget, we look at, you know, what's our lane kilometer? Uh, how many parks do we have? Our building facilities, you know, have any of the costs gone up? We're, we're constantly reviewing the, the current costs as well as trying to predict what our inflation rates are going to be. So all of that is built um, through the budget process and, you know, working closely with our procurement area too. They go out to try and bid certain things to try and get the best value for our dollar. Right building those things into our budgets as well. If there's, you know, through COVID was was quite interesting because there were a lot of supply yep. chain issues and and there were uh, even labor shortages, which drove the cost for things up right. astronomically. And, you know, we were hoping things as they normalized would kind of go down a bit, but uh, what we've seen is they've leveled off. Nothing's really gone down. Right. And, you know, that was a pretty good segue into another question that I really wanted to ask you. Um, You touched on it a little bit there. Budget season is a major initiative for your department. Can you explain to listeners a bit about what that process may look like for your team to prepare and some of the challenges that you face during it? Well, the challenge is always trying to try to keep down the, the, the rate as much as possible. It's always a struggle um, trying to see, you know, what new initiatives have, have come on or what new properties, what new roads, uh, what are our construction and our contract awards, what their uh, the values are of those. So we typically have started our budget process in June, where we come out with a budget timetable to list out the various deadlines, internal deadlines, as well as providing information to council and to the public to say, you know, we're, we're starting our budget process. Um, this is when we'll, we'll come forward with it for, for the public to provide comments and to review. Um, with that being said, we we do accept comments from from residents and questions and such on an ongoing basis, and we encourage that. We we would love to see people, you know, try and educate themselves on what's involved, like what's in our budget, what's it made up of, why does it cost so much? Well, these are the things that we're running. These are the programs that we're offering you, and um, you know, we're always looking for ways to bring in additional revenue or to cut costs. So my efficiencies and and things like that. For a resident who's interested in having their say in the budget, um, would you recommend that they contact town staff to provide that feedback? Or do you think their local counselor might be a better option or both? Uh, Probably both. I mean, we we have our, we've been trying in finance to update our website, Mm -hmm. um, the ajax.ca website with um, information to help residents understand the budget. So we put terminology in there. Um, We've tried to identify how the budget is created and the, the, the 
the different parts of the budget. The town portion of the tax tax bill is only 31%. Right. So there are three three parts to our tax bill that a resident receives. And the larger part is, is payment to the region of Durham mm-hmm. for their services. And then a smaller portion is for um, the province of Ontario for education. So trying to help residents understand you know, what we have responsibility for versus the region versus the other pieces that are out of our control. I would suggest that, you know, if, if anyone is not really sure about um, the budget process, that they go to our website first right. and then they can always email or call the finance department if they have additional questions. Right. And the region of Durham as well, they're contactable. They do a budget process. So if their question was regional, they could be speaking to regional staff, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The region does put out good pictographs and things in their budget process. Um, they have, I think, similar to, to Ajax, they have all their council meetings that are recorded. Right. So if residents are not able to tune in at that time at a live event, they can always go back and, and uh, watch a recording of, of councils. Meetings. Yeah, and that's a great point for our listeners. Um, even right now, we're building out um, the IMO page, which is um, the In My Opinion hub for um, residents here in Ajax, where we put projects. And part of that, we include past budget meetings so that people can kind of see how that process was working then. Um, they can, you know, participate in upcoming budget meetings. Those dates are available in there. So um, I would absolutely recommend that residents go to ajax.ca slash budget. They can learn a little bit more about what's going on. They can find the IMO page as well. And um, the regions page is very similar. I absolutely recommend for res- residents to go to that page as well. And then um, if there are any further questions after that, town staff are able to help redirect them to where they need to go or just answer the questions for them, really. And with that, are there any other details about your department that you wish residents knew? If so, can you expand on that? Well, I think the the, the four main areas, I'd say, would be the property tax, budgets and accounting, the procurement, and then I think I mentioned briefly um, our insurance and risk management. So the town of Ajax is part of a Durham municipal insurance pool. Mm-hmm. So it is um, it is a pool of the region of Durham and um, the lower tier municipalities. And so we're able to, to utilize us being a pool, lower rates and efficiencies are um, experienced through that. So there's regular meetings that, that I would attend uh, as part of a board okay. um, to ensure that Ajax is getting the best value for money. See, that's perfect. Cost savings for property taxes. (laughs) Well, Diane, thank you so much for coming here today and explaining a little bit more about what the finance department does. Um, I think it's a very crucial department that residents are very interested in getting to know a little bit more about, um, specifically in and around our budget season here. So we absolutely appreciate you coming on and having this conversation here for listeners today. If um, a resident wanted to reach out to finance, what would be the best way? Uh, probably through our email at budgets um, at ajax.ca would be a great way to reach out. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Diane. I'm Devin Jarvis with the Town of Ajax TOA Talks podcast. Episodes can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and on our webpage at ajax.ca slash TOA Talks. Listeners can download and listen to each episode offline or online from their personal device. If you have comments or feedback about our show, you can email corporate at ajax.ca. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk later, Ajax.